Hi there, and welcome to The Crimson Cult. And tonight we're reviewing the independent horror film Director's Cut uh, that came out in 2024. I got to check that out a few days ago, and I've done exactly three watches of the film. So uh, let's hit the opening and then let's get into it. All right, so the film in and of itself is about a a punk band from Long Island. Uh, something has happened uh, in their recent past that has uh, shaken the band to its core, especially its lead singer, who is really, really good in this movie. I really like the actor that plays the lead singer. I like the actor. That, actually, I like most of the... I like all the actors that are playing the band. Uh, Greg Papa is in this as well. And uh, he, of course, was in a recent movie that I reviewed called Falling Stars. And I wish he would have had a bigger part in this one because I'm actually really starting to uh, to really like that actor. And uh, anytime I see him, I get a um, I get a bit more interested and invested, uh, especially with which whatever character that he's playing at the time. Uh, this here is basically uh, the band gets you know they've been contacted on social media. By this guy calling himself the director. He is willing to direct their very first music video uh, so that they can get something out there. Uh, they've been arguing. The The lead singer wants to, he wants to write songs. He wants to keep into the creative process of it. Uh, the rest of the band, you know, they need money. Uh, they want to get out there and they want to go and play at different venues and stuff like that. He says, I'll do the venues. I'll play. I'll sell my soul, basically. But I was told there's a guy... That has a that is willing to do a music video. He's got the location. He's got you know we don't have to pay anything. The band is skeptical at first, as is the you know the lead singer initially. But it's the con it's a conflict during a a meeting at the beginning of the film between the band members that has him kind of grasping at straws because he really doesn't want to go out and he doesn't seem to be ready to actually go out and play the venues and he really wants to kind of just focus on this aspect to kind of get away from. Uh, something that happened earlier on that will play a much bigger part in the film. The uh, eventually they have a a Zoom call where they speak to this uh, mysterious director. He's an unusual character. He is played by Louis Lombardi, and Louis Lombardi is a name that you may not know offhand, but he's one of those guys that when you see his, his face, you know him. He's been in a lot of movies over the years, and you've definitely seen him in one of them at least. Uh, probably several of them. Uh, his character, the director, is unusual, and I have a feeling that he plays the character the way that he played him. And the f it was one of the things that took me out when I first watched the film. I watched the film uh, three times to give it a proper uh, review and to get a good scope on there. I do tend to watch like two to three times. Uh, but this one here, uh, I wasn't sure on his uh, choices for, uh, for, the, for the director. And this is where I can get kind of picky, is when it comes to uh, some of the performances. Even though I know this is like, uh, you know, this is a first time uh, film for most of these people in, uh, in this one here. It is a gr well directed film, and it is extremely well shot. There are some really great sequences in here. And uh, Lombardi's, like, performance took me a while to get into, but... I kind of got dug it after, not first the first watch of the film. I wasn't quite sure if I was completely into what he was doing with the role, uh, but I think he's trying to make a character that can be an ongoing character. That can be a character that can come back. That we can dive a bit more into. We don't learn a lot about the character of the director. The reasoning behind the uh, like everything that goes on. I wasn't so down with that. It's you'll see it coming. It uh, like you will definitely see it coming. It's not going to be something that's just going to surprise you. Uh, that being said, does that mean that it's not a fun ride along the way, especially for like a lower budget film? It really is. It's, it's a fun ride, and it works because of the actors that are in the film. It works because of the direction that is done 
with the with with the film itself. Director's Cut is a film that I think that works, but it's a film that I think it's a beginning. It's a starter point uh, for this director and for these actors to do much, much more. And I would like to see how a follow-up like this would go. Because I'm a guy that recently watched Terrifier 3. And, you know, talking about like indie films that blew up, right? And I, I love Terrifier 3. I absolutely adored Terrifier 2. I was not a fan of Terrifier 1. It took me at least three to four watches before I, I dug Terrifier 1. And even then, there were certain aspects that I had with it. Uh, here's the thing. The, the leads in this are likable despite themselves. And I know that there's a... That some people are going to be like, oh, this character is really not the nicest character. And I, I think that's more of a realistic way to, uh, to, take, uh, to take it. I enjoyed... Uh, I really, really enjoyed the uh, the lead. I think I thought he was he was really good, and his uh, his girlfriend is in just such a fun character on the screen. She's not a likable character, and she's not. I don't think she's meant to be a likable character, but I've found myself liking her. I think more than the people in the film. You know, the act, the characters were uh, were supposed to like her. She's the girlfriend. That, you know, she's the one, she's very, she takes no, no BS. And I, I kind of dug that, but a lot of them were like, you know, the characters kind of rolling their eyes and kind of like, oh no, she's causing those problems again. But that type of character kind of like rings true to me. Um, I enjoyed that portion of the film. It is a lower budget horror film and I'm really interested in seeing where they go. Are they going to do a director's cut too? Are we going to see the character of the director again? Does the uh, does the actual director of this film want to go into a dif- different uh, direction uh, with uh, with this? Does he not want to do another horror? Maybe he wants to do horror, but like something completely different than this one right here. I- I'm kind of curious to what you guys will think of the film. I enjoyed it, but it, it would, I enjoyed it more on a second viewing than I do did on the on the first viewing and. To be bluntly honest, it was because I there were two things. Uh, the reasoning behind what was being done seemed to be telegraphed to me, and that did take me out of it a bit when like the reveal is done, and it doesn't seem like reveal because you know that uh, you kind of you know oh yeah that's exactly what it's going to be you know that's what it's going to be, um, and I wasn't quite sold the first time on Louis Lombardi's. Uh, be, uh, as a director now that being said a uh, what is it they said say in those old movies right a good cast is uh, is worth repeating and this is a good cast so this is uh we got louis lombardi lucy hart danielle Koch, tyler ivy Haley casty um brandy okoa I, I really apologize if i got the name wrong greg papa darren hickox and a name i'm totally gonna miss mess up is Louis Rocky Bagagalupo? There we go. With that, I do have a cheat sheet for because I'm horrible with names. Uh, the film was directed by Don Capria, and let's dive into uh, my final thoughts on uh, on this film right here. The gore sequences within this film are something that I did enjoy. It's not an over the top gore sequence like along the lines of something that you would see in a Terrifier, but there is some neat little aspects there that do get kind of fun and kind of inventive. And as a guy that does like his his rock and roll, I will say that I really did like the music choices that are done in this uh, in this film. One of my gripes is that there is a there's a point in the film where the director says to them like, you know, I'm going to shoot your scenes, so I'm going to bring one one member of the group in after the other. But something's happened before this where it doesn't seem like the most realistic choice being made. I know that's I know it's a kind of a nitpick for a horror film, but the reason that it stands out more is because up to this point, uh, I've been I've been pretty invested in the film. I really like the the characters. I thought I like the way the actors are doing them. I like the direction of the film. I find you know there's some good like cool suspenseful sequences, and when they make that like there's a confrontation, and for them to like just completely trust him 
to go in one at a time was uh, something that I was kind of iffy with. Now, it does win me back later on within the film. I, I did get upset that they did that and be like, what happens because of that? Well, but it's a, it's an intriguing film and I don't think, and I haven't been able to speak to the director or anything like that. So I don't think, I don't think this is something that's meant to be a one-off. Maybe it is, but I'm kind of intrigued to see with where they'd go with this. Uh, the, like I mentioned earlier, the acting choices by the, by the lead uh, the villain was something that I wasn't quite sure that I was to- whether I was totally into it or or whether I totally understood it. And I feel that it is a character that could really like grow with uh, with a follow-up and to to get more of a of a mythos here. I feel like this seems like it it's it's a slasher film. It is it seems like the start of what could be something. But it it is the start. And Unlike Terrifier, <laughs> which, uh, where you know, when I watched Terrifier, I didn't like the first one initially, so two and three eventually were ones that I ended up loving. Uh, I did like the cast in this one here. I did like the cast overall in this uh, in this film. Um, the leads, especially the two, the lead females in the film are extremely good. Uh, the best friend of the lead singer and the lead singer have a very realistic like relationship and reminded me of friendships that I've had uh, throughout my life. Not the one part, one part, like, but in like is in the, in the closer knit portion of it. Um, like when they, when he understands them, when he gets them, when he looks at him and he knows that he's, he's damaged a bit and he looks at his friend and he's like, you know, let's, let's go for a ride and see if we really want to do this. He understands you have like this unspoken bond, like the lead singer is a dick uh, in some points. So you'll find it one portion of the film, he's a real jerk. Um, but his friend is there anyway. And I liked that actor. I liked the actor that played the, the friend. I thought he did an incredible job and it made it seem really realistic. Overall, what did I think of this film? It was a film that had some issues overall when I, when I initially watched it. I liked it better... On second watch. Now that being said, you maybe some that's going to just you want to watch this and you know, you know, next next right. Um, how will you find it? It is a understand. It is a lower budget uh, slasher film. It definitely has a sense of humor that I met, that I didn't pick up on when I was first watching it. The sense of humor does come f- through more for me came through more for me in the second watch that being said if you're watching this review before you're watching this film uh then uh you'll probably pick up on this stuff a lot quicker than i did <laughs> uh, but overall this was an entertaining film i i enjoyed it i did have some issues with the with the last third of the film with some choices that were made but nothing that totally that really took me out of the film you could tell that the people that were making this film we're not just, you know, you'll see some films that are made and they're just slapped together. You know, okay, let's, let's you know, it's horror. Well, it doesn't matter. You feel like these people cared about what they're making. You feel that they really, like, they really wanted to uh, to make something different, something special. That they really wanted to advance. And I think that if you give the film a chance, it's it's definitely worth checking out. Director's Cut may not be my favorite film that I've watched in this spooky season, but it is something interesting. It is something different. And at a time when people are looking around and complaining that everything's a sequel, everything's a remake, everything's a reboot, like where's all the different stuff? Where's, where's the other films? Where's the, where's the films that take chances? Where's the films that do, that does something different? Here's one of them right now. Director's Cotton is an interesting film. And is it called a cinema approved? It, it, it is, with the caveat that, you know, if you're a horror fan, you're going to enjoy this a lot more than if you're not a horror fan. But the humor in it, I think, will... Especially, I want to know, like, if you watch this movie, there's something really intriguing about some of the choices that the director, like, the actor made, like, Lombardi made, when playing the director, that... 
just at first baffled me, but then like kind of like sucked me in. And I I don't know if um uh, I kind of hope this isn't a one off. I want to know. I feel this is something that in a sequel, um, we could really, really advance what's there. And hopefully, because I don't want, like, I know, like, the reason. There's a reason said, like, why he did it. Even though he doesn't really explain so much who he is, you kind of have a feeling of who he could be. Um, I don't believe that the reasoning that he says is it. It is obvious from like hints and clues given throughout the film that uh, this has happened before. And that is what intrigues me the most is that when I first watched this film, when I got to the end of the film, when the reveal was there and said, oh, I get it. Like, oh, I knew I kind of knew that was going to have something to do with this. I was that I was like, I'm, I'm not pretty. I'm not really sold. I went back. Rewatching it, seeing sequences, seeing the sequence in the basement, and uh, and I'm like, oh no no, that that's not it, that's just part of it. We're not gonna know all of it, and that's the second that the light bulb went off, and that is the second that this went from being interesting to cult cinema approved. My name's Aaron. Thanks for watching. I will see you here again. Hopefully you're enjoying the spooky season and um, it's an intriguing film. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've seen this film yet, if you managed to watch it, uh, if you enjoyed it, what you thought of the uh, of the acting, of the music choices. I really like the music choices. That's one thing that really stood out to me. And uh, what you thought of the, uh, of the character. Do you think the director could be a character that you would like to see or could see in future films? I'll see you soon. Oh God! Oh, oh! Uh, subscription sloth here. Just want to remind you that uh, I know in the summertime, especially, it can be super warm and lazy. But uh, if you're liking this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to go that step farther and join the uh, Patreon, there's a there's a link for that down below. You can super sticker, super tatter, donate. But above all, just lie back. And enjoy the video because that's a uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So you have a film like that when you watch it and you're not quite sure when you first watch it if you totally love it or totally hate it or kind of in between. Uh, this was an intriguing one where I uh, I found that the movie kind of pushed some buttons and this ha happened to me with the movies like Eden Lake and uh, the original Terrifier as well. But as I started to rewatch it, I started to pick up on things that I didn't initially pick up on. That's one of the reasons I think it's really important when you're watching a film, when you're going to review a film, to look at the positives and negatives of something. And to also understand uh, this, that if you're, if you're doing it from like a one watch type of thing, then it's a reaction review. If you're able to dive into it a bit deeper, then it becomes... Uh, for me personally, more of an actual uh, review of the of the film. With uh, this one right here, I, I still have to say they're going in one at a time. I don't think was the best decision script wise, but uh, there's a bit of a payoff, so that isn't too bad. I'm still interested to see what they could do with this with this character, and uh, I would like to have seen. A bit more on the the tragedy that had happened so that would have been interesting as well so I don't want to give anything away so uh, if you check it out make sure you let me know in the comment section down below and like share subscribe I got a patron and if you want to join that you'd be welcome to and I would absolutely adore that we have some amazing stuff over there and I've got a membership as well where we have a lot of incredible stuff on happy spooky season and uh, I'll see you next time and what are you at